Hi, welcome to Florida Institute of Technology. My name is Debbie Carstens, and I've been a professor here since 2003. My PhD is from University of Central Florida in industrial engineering with an emphasis in human factors. I have an MBA, and I also have an undergraduate in um, marketing. And I teach in the area of human factors, courses such as human performance and advanced human factors, aviation psychology, human automation, and a whole bunch of different aviation uh, human factors uh, research type uh, courses. With that, I'd like to introduce Professor Muth, and he's going to tell you a little bit about him. Hi, I'm Tim Muth, and um, I went to school undergraduate at Florida State University, got an MBA from Wake Forest University, and then I spent about 30 years in the corporate world. Um, I teach international business classes and a class called Creativity, Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and also Personal Finance. And I've been on the faculty here since uh, 2007. And now Professor Ellis is going to tell everyone a little bit about herself. Hi, I'm Katrina Ellis. Uh, this is uh, my third year at Florida Tech. I've been here um, for a couple of years. Uh, I went to school at Michigan Technological University. Um, I got my PhD in Applied Cognitive Science and Human Factors. I got a, a Master's in Cognitive Psychology from Kansas State University. And um, I teach courses in cognitive psychology, research methods, and statistics, as well as sensation perception and other intro psychology courses in the undergraduate program. Great, thank you. And now, Professor Turingen. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Ralph Turingen. Um, I've gone through so many schools. I uh, received my bachelor's in 19, 1984 at the University of the Philippines. And then I was crazy enough to go to the University of Rhode Island. Um, six months after I graduated and uh, began my graduate school in uh, marine sciences in, uh, the, at the University of Rhode Island. I finished my master's there uh, in 1986 and then went through uh, my PhD at uh, the University of Puerto Rico and got that in uh, 1992. And then went to Florida State for my postdoc. Uh, and uh, you know, got hired by FIT as an assistant professor in biological sciences uh, in 1995, and I've been since then here, and I do hope to retire here. So uh, I teach biological statistics. In fact, I was hired to develop that course, um, and I still teach that course. It is required for all biology majors. It really is an experimental design kind of, uh, of course, and then I also teach evolution of vertebrates, and of course, dearest to my heart is marine biology. I teach a field course uh, in uh, marine biology that uh, allows me and my students to go to Puerto Rico to do real marine science on coral reefs there. And uh, we're excited to, uh, to do that every summer. Excellent. Thank you all so much. So looking back, how would you use your own experience to help prospective students decide about Florida Tech from an undergraduate perspective? So let's start to talk a little bit about that. So remembering your undergraduate days, um, what do you feel would be uh, something helpful to prospective students? Hmm. I'll begin with, uh, with, with that because I, that, that's what I really love being here at FIT and that is the hands-on. Uh, and uh, I, I got that from my experiences as an, as an undergrad, as a marine biologist, nothing really comes to um, meaning uh, in textbooks or lectures or discussions uh, with your professors unless you go out there. And that's one of the reasons why I had loved Florida Tech for, is finding meaning or conveying the meaning to our students of what we teach them, concepts, no matter how difficult it is. And the students really get it because they see the immediate utility of the concept by doing it. Uh, our laboratories are, are well designed for that. And uh, you know, we now have the design lab. And, so, and then we go to the field. So that, um, you know, I do remember that from my undergrad, and I use that as still as a uh, kind of a protocol uh, when I teach a relatively unattractive <laughs> course <laughs> called Statistics for Biologists, and uh, I'm yeah. sure you can, you know, you, you yeah. can uh, yeah. attest yeah. to that. Yeah, that's fantastic. One thing I, I would add to what you said is, as I reflect back on my experience and stuff, Florida Tech offers a variety of experiences for students in and outside the classroom. Mm -hmm. I forgot the last count, we have something like 90 some odd yep. clubs. We always encourage students from the business standpoint, you can use your marketing skills, your management skills, organizational skills, starting a club, raising funds, you know, learning new things, and particularly being at technical school, we tell the, the business students, you're going to be working with technical folks. Yep. You know, they're different than business people. They speak a different language. This is a good place to meet them, to interact, make friends with them, because those are people you're going to work with when you get out of here. You know, and take advantage of all the opportunity you've got while you're here. 
Excellent. And on top of that, the small class sizes like yeah. that. When I was an undergraduate student, I was in a very small program um, and there was no graduate program. Although there is a graduate program in psychology here, um, the, the class sizes are still as small. And I have a lot of undergraduate students in my research labs. Um, they get that hands on mm -hmm. experience. And so I'm able to teach them um, as well as, you know, blur the lines between lab and learning, you know. So. You say small, but what size classes do you have? Um, my class sizes, I think they're no more. I've never had a class over 22. And so most of the time they're within the teens, so 12 to 17 is about the average class size. Yeah, yeah. from a business standpoint, undergraduate typically is about 25 or less. Okay. Yeah. about the same size. Yeah. So, so, so stepping from that, yes, small class size, and I always tell my undergraduate students here, that um, yes, our focus is undergrad, but having these few, uh, you know, undergraduate students actually teach, they teach our undergraduates about graduate school. And you, you, you cannot get that from a, uh, a, 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 a very strong graduate school because they will just be focused on their own little world. But at FIT, what I do with my undergraduate students is, hey, learn about graduate school by working with graduate students in their research and adding on to the hands-on, it brings them to a higher level um, just before they graduate. And that makes them become more competitive when they opt to actually go to graduate school. Absolutely. Um, and and uh, you know, the internships that we offer here are just mm -hmm. so incredible for graduate students. There's so many opportunities for undergraduate students to do research yeah. and even to publish as well. Um, right. have undergraduate yeah. students, exactly. we do usability testing project and they actually get to present at conferences and um, sometimes they even get lucky and get a journal uh, publication mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. And then also even you get a faculty advisor. So you're assigned the same faculty advisor from day one as you are from your very last day. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really nice way to have a great rapport and then you even have people that you can easily get letters of recommendations from yep. and such. That know you yeah. and yeah. what you did here. Yeah. Kind of just a blank. yeah. And that, that, with the small class sizes you get to know your students mm -hmm. rather than just a name on paper. You know they're, they're a person. You, you, you've had multiple interactions with them by the time that they graduate they have um, you know you've had them in your lab you've had them in yeah. class you've had them for internship you've had them for multiple opportunities so you can really write strong recommendation letters right. for them I, I was one I teach one freshman class and I warned the freshman said it's a double-edged sword <laughs> 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 we're gonna know you you're gonna know us you know it may work to your advantage but if you don't come to class and we're gonna know, know. <laughs> we're gonna know exactly <laughs> and, and, the, and the added value to, to the student when you, you know them because not just because they got an A in your course. They can see that in the transcript, but knowing them more and beyond the classroom adds more value to our letters. Yeah. And when the, uh, you know, the, the, the recipient of the letter reads it, I said, wow, this is more candid than I thought. And, uh, and, 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 and this is at the undergraduate. It is because as we as professors know them, because there are fewer of them that we, we take care of. And we monitor them through time so that by the time they graduate, they no longer are so stressed out to think of the next step because we had dealt with that yeah. beforehand. And and what you know, day of graduation is really a, a, a fun day for them because they already know where to go after you know the, the May commencement exercise. So truly, really, you know, that they're cared for. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I'd say, but we add to that is. In addition to small size, it's, yeah. we have students from all over. Yes. The diversity, the global, and I teach your national business class, but any class. You know, things come up in class because kids are from those areas yeah. or traveled there. You know, it just enriches the whole whole experience of uh, what they're doing here. And it, it goes back to what we talked before about getting outside the classroom. But I, I'm convinced most of them learn half as much outside, the 50 percent outside the class to do in class. And we, we get to see them mature over the four or six years or whatever they spend here, mm -hmm. which is really. Professor, I'm going to talk a little bit about that project that you do in your class where they get to work with other countries because I find okay. that fascinating. Okay. Yeah, in our senior level international business class, that we have a um, project called X Culture. It runs eight weeks, and we're partnered with about 120 universities around the world. So, over an eight week period, every student in my class gets five teammates, each teammate's from a different college in a different country of the world. And they work with a real life company on the International Business Challenge. And you know, we talk to them and tell them, about, you know, here's the cultural things you're going to run into. This, that, and they, they ignore me every class. But when they have the problem themselves, you know, when American explains something in their own slang, right. and somebody doesn't do what they thought they're going to do, then they go, oh, that's what you're trying to tell me to do. 
And it's just a great way, you know, as close as we can get in the business world for them to get yeah. real national experience without actually working it. And, and I think you mentioned that with your classes. It's a hands-on type of activity that we can do because you have 20, 25 students. If I had 200 in my class, my hair would be grayer than it is now. <laughs> you know, I'd be going nuts. And it's just impossible to <laughs> yeah, yeah, reach out to every single person right. in that case. Excellent. Well, what about from a graduate perspective, whether it's a master's or PhD, what is everyone's thoughts on that? Um, it, you know, stepping up from you know the undergraduate to diversity at the graduate level, it's it, it really is much more needed than their global and their scope, because the research that uh, and of course I'm a fish person, so my, my my research is on fish. But what I really teach my my graduate students is the big picture. We may be using fish here or marine biology as a model, but the um, the concept that we're investigating in here, or the research question, has a further reach, much global than, than, than we think. And, and that's what our graduate students get here. In whichever field is, we connect them. And you know the, the, the international reach of, of our graduate students, being able to work with other cultures uh, in itself, very helpful. Um, and then that encourages them to go visit those places. And in, in, in my, in my uh, lab, um, I do have, sort of not, not required, but highly encourage my PhD students before they graduate to go out into an international field, not just to visit, but to immerse themselves. And so the recent uh, graduate student I had had the Fulbright Fellowship and spent nine months in the Philippines. As a marine biologist, yeah. he came back with a much more enriched view of marine biology because he learned by working with the locals there that uh, the problems are universal, global, but the solutions are just very difficult to get into that locale. It takes our kind of education here in the US to bring uh, quality um, and much more um, reasonable solutions to the problem there. And that mix in itself makes our graduate students much more mature when they get out of here. They're much more confident uh, simply because the, the, of their experiences. Excellent. If I could add something, something you said that sort of clicked in my mind. I think our students come out with good communication yes. skills, yeah. both oral and written, and written, and they work in teams, so they get used to working with other folks, so it's sort of second nature when they walk mm -hmm. out. And mm -hmm. when you get the workforce, you know, I, I found it wasn't always the smartest people that succeeded in business. It was ones that could motivate others, get things done, working with people. You know, do you want to say thank you? Yeah, could explain something so people understood it. You know, motivate them. All, all the simple kind of stuff. You know, and there's a book about you know all you need to do is what you learned in kindergarten. It's some of those basic things that goes along with the, the hard stuff you get here. And, and because they're working in teams so much, because they get in front of the class and making presentations, they're writing things. That it, it, it just the skill they, they acquired. I don't think they see it as a class per se. It, yeah, it is. It's Excellent. gained from experience. Yeah. And there's even more opportunities at the graduate level to be employed as a graduate research assistant. So you get to work with faculty. You get to learn how to write grants, how to actually conduct research, how to analyze data. So there's so much hands-on. Again, I think that same hands-on theme um, goes across all different um, degree programs. Yeah. So our our, our approach to uh, graduate education here at Florida Tech. That I find, you know, based on uh, you know, talking with my colleagues uh, in, in other universities, other programs, is we do teach our students here, especially at the graduate level, you know, life quality type of skills. Because when they get out of graduate school, um, they're ready to be on their own, you know, writing grants, uh, teaching effectively, coming up with their own kind of, of, of recipe to address questions or to teach a course. Uh, sure because we facilitate their development into being more of an independent thinker than in other uh, schools in which the graduate students are used to accomplish the goals of whoever the PI is. Uh, and, and, and I think that in itself is good to deliver whatever the, the PI wants delivered from the lab, but you know, where is the, the, the critical thinking uh, that the graduate student ought to have when he gets out of that term limited kind of, of an appointment you know, as a graduate student. Yes. FIT, I, I can guarantee, is really good at that. And that's why we're very successful in uh, where our alumni go. Yes, um, and you get on so. problem solving, critical yes. thinking, yeah. and also the mentorship that you really get mm -hmm. at, at our university. I think we're very proud of We're of very that. proud.
problem-centered research, which is perfect. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. So great. Um, here at Florida Institute of Technology, we do a lot of research, as we all know, and we all are part of that research. Um, but I wanted to find out a little bit just from perspective. So, what type of research do you think FIT does that maybe has the most global impact? Well, uh, some of the research that I work on is I've been helping the Scott Center for Autism yes. Research, and so Excellent. I think that their program of research trying to get um, therapy for children with autism, families um, with children of autism, the help that they need. Um, it's, it's a far-reaching program. It reaches individuals not just in our state, but all over the United States and internationally. Um, autism is a big problem. One in 74 kids is born with autism these wow. days, and so it is a big problem, um, and using applied behavior analysis is a really good method of helping individuals with behavior problems with autism. So Thank you. The, the Scott Center has a lot of great research over there and has a really good global impact. Excellent. Well, and, I, and, and I will take you know your, your, your last word, global impact, you know, to step up from that in our field in bio, biological sciences. Uh, and, and truly, this, that's the theme that, that really captures most of the research that we do. Um, in, in the biological sciences, we have researchers who work on Alzheimer's disease because that is, that is truly a, a, a global issue that we have to address now. Climate change is a very big phenomenon that, that, that sort of unites most of our research in physiology, in marine biology, in medicine, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and so uh, the, um, the, the, some of the, the, the practical examples of this is you know, we're big in sustaining resources uh, and particularly focusing on developing countries in which uh, poverty is rooted in the fact that they have overexploited a lot of their agriculture and, and uh, you know the, the, the marine resources such that um, it, it, to a point that it becomes a problem as to where are go they going to get the next food for the table. And so it's, it's not too late yet. So we, we, um, our research is focused on how we can transfer the, uh, the technological know-how that we have developed at FIT through the years into um, situations that would work for them. And so uh, you know, one of the offshoots of our research at FIT is uh, transfer technology, which again, uh, we at Florida Tech are becoming you know, very good at it. Um, and, and for example, you know, there is this uh, you know, management scheme that, it, that we developed as, as marine biologists and scientists at, at, uh, in, in the US. And you know, that model is you know, based on our practices in here that we have a federal government who sets the standards, regulations. Um, and uh, in itself, it works in the USA. But what we teach our graduate students is that this need to be modified when we go to a developing country like the Philippines in which management is decentralized. It becomes a little bit more complicated because there's no standard for the whole nation. And so, um, uh, you know, one city was going to manage the beach around that city is going to impose upon its own regulations and the locals or whoever utilizes the, those beaches. And you go to another uh, city with, with, with certain beaches for, for utilization, they have another management scheme. So the challenge to our, our graduate students is, OK, how can we then modify this, the, the, this paradigm? And they learn us that from us, and they go there, they study the situation there, they come back here, retweak the model to something that affect, that works there. So uh, you know, what a rich way for our graduate students uh, conducting research to really fine tune what we teach them here to the to to the, to the locally um, to the local situations in other parts of the world, and that's what you know makes our reach really global in Absolutely. research as well. Yeah. And, and in business, it, it's sort of a different. Yeah. Kind of focus on research. We we talk more about applied things. Mm -hmm. in, in one of our MBA classes, the students went to a local food bank mm -hmm. and provide marketing services to help with food drive. Yeah. And at, at the operations class, they looked at how the warehouse was run. So they're in an actual organization trying to help them. You know, one argues had global impact, but in, in that particular organization, I think it was helpful. The students learned, yes. and the organization could implement what they were doing. Excellent. Not quite the deep research you're doing in <laughs> marine biology, but you know it's a different focus. It's, 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 it's practical and, and, yeah, and useful. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, for, for students looking at it, it's hard for them. You know, we, we talk in colleges and we talk about each other. Right. You know, but and, and different students are going to gravitate to different type of stuff. And and truly, the colleges have different um, personalities, different focuses, where they, they look at stuff. But yeah, I also like Florida because we we go across the boundaries pretty well. Yeah. And, uh, you. You know, we have our own little narrow things, but I know in some of my classes I have psychology students, I have science students yeah. from, from time to time that. 
I want to take a business course, and I'm sure you guys see ours. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I expect you to exactly. <laughs> Also, and it's important, all the corporations, and they're going to learn from each other's too, so that yeah. type of research. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you. Um, the only other um, research that was coming to mind is just a lot with sustainability, and I know in, in our department, they're looking at anything from, say, water reuse, and then I understand in other departments in College of Engineering, they look at like fuel um, efficiency and things yeah. like, like um, those topics. So. Um, so that's a little bit just on some of our research and also um, from a practitioner standpoint and um, also of what we do from a global impact. So as far as what's familiar, I'll and, 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 yeah, let, yeah, let me just add on to conclude on this research. One, one of the, the unique uh, aspects of how we train our graduate students is the broader impact. Yeah. And uh, you know, a lot of us in the sciences uh, would be very good at doing the science. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we tell our graduate students, well, that is not the end of our responsibility as scientists. We ought to bring this to utility in the communities. Mm -hmm. And that's the broader impact. And uh, that, that, that's why um, we at Florida Tech uh, bring our students uh, whatever they had uh, come up with and developed or discovered in science to the community, and that's why we bring them. This is our outreach. Uh, Florida Tech is very, very big in, the, in that, and, and our graduate students, and now our undergraduate students are into that as mm -hmm. well, because really, as a scientist, uh, it used to be that the currency of our success is counted on the number of publications that we had gotten out there in peer-reviewed journal. Well, we, we have to go beyond that now. How many communities had benefited from the research that we had accomplished at Florida Tech? And, 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 and that's FIT. Uh, I do believe that uh, we, we are in that kind of a, um, a flavor of research at the graduate level is really honing on into our students the broader implications. And that means giving to the community yes. um, what they deserve from our discoveries. Mm -hmm. I've always told her you want to um, be impactful globally, mm -hmm. you got to start locally. Yes, and yes. So, yeah, yes. there's so much I think that we do. And in, in, in this resource management especially, they, they just know how to, to, to get and, and uh, to, to catch fish or to, to get something to eat. They won't have an idea of the long-term implications of their gathering activities. It is our responsibility to bring that knowledge to them. And they're very receptive. Um, and you know, most of these people didn't go to school. So again, uh, going into uh, communication skills, which we do very well here at Florida Tech, you know, I, I tell my students, you cannot get out of this lab unless you can tell the same story in different ways. When you talk to a kindergartner, speak to that language. Uh, when you talk to a highly educated marine biology, use our jargon. Um, and, and again, in written, in oral, when you give talks, or in a poster, those are three different ways in which you can communicate exactly the same story. And that's why at FIT, we have all of those. You know, we have poster sessions, we have oral sessions in which you give your story in 15 minutes, and then we go to schools, we go to fairs, state fairs, and talk to locals. Amazing, and it's FIT who delivers that. Excellent. What type of research do you each feel is most uh, familiar to FIT in terms of from the public um, eyes? What did you think they view our, our most um, maybe popular research? I don't know the right way to maybe phrase that, but. And I, I always think about our lightning research and even the tsunami research. That seemed to be um, research topics that were in the news a lot. And so, um, possibly. Research. No, autism, that's, that's about the Absolutely. only thing that comes to mind. I, I, mean, I, 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 I ran the Boston Marathon in, in oh, 2015. Congratulations. And, and thank you. <laughs> if anybody did, congratulations <laughs> to you. Because, oh, are you running for the autism program at FIT? Oh, Where yeah. did you hear that? Yeah, well, that's that's wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, so, uh, so, 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 so they know, uh, you know, and, and the autism research is actually, you know, has, has become, you know, one of the, um, uh, you know, outside of marine biology and outside of engineering computer science that actually were known at FIT. I, I want you to know that. Uh, I, I speak to, you know, a regular friends outside and said, oh, I've heard about the autism. And, and you know, well, you know, uh, they, they have, they know people, they know kids. Right, right. Uh, and, and that has going to that's going to be a, a very important uh, service that we provide out of Go research. Ahead, yeah. and, and I'll probably embarrass myself because it's way outside my area, but you know, I, I I would think our aerospace and space programs are really good. The research there because yeah. we we started from the space background, and I was sitting in a meeting the other day, and uh, some someone was mentioning that 
we have many, many of our graduates up at SpaceX, mm -hmm. many at Blue Origin, you know, they're, they're cool private companies that are going to put people on Mars and space travel and stuff like that. And we don't, none of us quite have the expertise, but we know those things are going on yeah. and it attracts a lot of students here. And, you know, we have astronauts that walk around campus. Right, that, that's that great. had the practical experience. I'm sure the kids are motivated with some, some of those kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. In fact, um, my colleague who sits right next to me, she uh, works with science and they do a lot with how to grow um, and how would they be able to grow plants mm -hmm. and on, on, Mars. on Mars. And so it's amazing. Um, yeah. And there's exactly. some research even in psychology, you know, how people work together in a close yes. environment, you know walled off from the rest Can of the civilization. Can you imagine that? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So we're teamwork, you know, how yeah. teams work together to accomplish missions Absolutely. in isolation. And that mission to Mars is going to be so long, and how are you going to even do the team selection for that? And right, so, pick, the, pick the people that, you know, personalities that work well together. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, one of the research highlights in the biological sciences that really is in tune with, with modern science now is uh, you know, we, we have a team of, of, of faculty and researchers in there who investigate the genetic basis yeah. of, of, of everything we are. We call that phenotype. Uh, so uh, be it diseases, um, so, so we have a team that works on the genetic uh, sort of uh, mechanisms that underlie a lot of these uh, diseases that seem to, uh, you know, uh, to um, project itself uh, when we grow old. That's, you know, dementia and, and, and uh, Alzheimer's and things like that. So they're now trying to investigate that, and, we had, and that's being supported by the local community in Brevard. And to, to a community and, and, and a system-wide biologist like I, I, I am, we get those kind of understanding to actually help us um, explain more why we behave the way we are, um, or we, we have this pattern of relationships that uh, we had developed. Because in fact, that has a true uh, genetic, in, it is in our DNA, and so we're just in the process of understanding how that works now. Uh, and I think that, you know, that's, that's biological. Yeah, biology. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Any other type of research that we do at FIT that's very impactful to humanity? overall that we haven't already discussed? Um, We've hit on quite a few um, different areas, so excellent. Well, um, thank you so much. So what other research is going on within your um, departments and um, what research specifically um, maybe are you also working on, um, whether practitioner side or um, research too? All, all of this is all very important. So um, he'd like to talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, one of the research projects that I'm working on is a hur hurricane evacuation oh. decision making. That's so important. Looking at, <laughs> yes. So it, as you notice, we as the last couple of years we've had a couple of hurricanes. Yes. Um, and but nothing hit us. Nothing. Right. Right. Well, well, um, but still, students were required to evacuate, yeah. and so trying to understand their um, mindset yeah. during yeah. evacuation. So we were able to uh, collect data before the hurricane actually even hit Excellent. to kind of assess, you know, what their feelings are. What are they thinking of evacuating? Did they prepare at all? Um, you know, maybe some of the, the th just the things that were going on in their mind leading up to that uh, natural disaster. Um, and so trying to identify students who may be unwilling to evacuate or would evacuate um, unnecessarily, just making sure that people are being safe and doing the things that they're supposed to do to make sure that they don't get hurt. Those situations. That's so, wonderful, and it's so important because we have so many students that aren't from this area or right. maybe from an area that's used to uh, right. hit by hurricanes. So right, right. So in informing them as well as assessing where they're at mindset to make sure that you know it doesn't impact their schoolwork too much because that's a lot of the things that we were seeing. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Great. <laughs> uh, you know, business is a little bit yeah. different, but when you say research, what I think about is our students. We're, we we uh, give them the opportunity to work through the student incubator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We work with local businesses, attorneys, accountants. If they have yeah. a business idea and they want to, if, if they want to launch the business idea, there's people here that will support in that exactly. effort. If they don't think they want to launch it, but they just want to go through the steps of what it would take, they can do that also. Absolutely. And we're getting more involved with some of the engineering students as they go through the senior design project. They, they, some of their competitions, they've got to look at marketplaces, and in the case of a couple of companies they work with, they're given money, and they've got to account for the money, and develop project plans. So they're getting involved there and, and learning about, all right, if we take this idea from, um, I think one of us was about a self-guided drone, that, I forget exactly what, it, I think it was going in the water or something like that. But right. they, they learn a little bit about the technology, but also what it would take to actually bring it to market. Yeah. Who would buy that, what they'd pay for it, where you'd manufacture it. So again, it's more of applied research, yeah. but 
they sort of stepped into the business world without quite being there. And one other um, thought, I, I know Professor Muth has been involved in uh, quite a few um, assistance with brand new um, companies and helping them get launched. Yeah. And so that's been something that I know you've been very instrumental in helping um, small businesses succeed in our local community. Yeah, everything from a, a doggy daycare yeah. to a ballerina <laughs> shop <laughs> to you know, manufacturing. Yeah, and and you know, we have big companies yeah. and we have small companies and mid-sized companies in this area. You know, we call it the Space Coast, a lot of them are technology related, but a lot of them are just mom and pop businesses. Yeah. And our students can get involved with many different kind of things. Yeah. I mentioned nonprofit, profits, I mean, sort of where their interest goes. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, gosh. Um, one, um, we have, um, oh, go ahead. No, no, please. no I, yeah. I just want to take off from yeah. one of my uh, students who actually graduated, went through that uh, incubation oh, okay. workshop. And he's, he's, he's in, in um, um, you know, back home in his hometown now, developing his shrimp farm. And so we have this, this, this uh, research uh, through the years called aquaculture, and, and especially marine aquaculture. And I sent him to that seminar, and now he, he has learned how to develop a business plan. Um, and now I believe he has he found some uh, you know angel investors to help him yes, uh, to come up with a prototype, <laughs> and, and and that is exactly what um, we, we we nurture here at FIT is that we have the school of business, we have the sciences, and in this case, instead of sitting in a classroom and go through a business school, we collaborate, and that's exactly what I promoted to the student. He learned so much from that uh, incubation program. And uh, you know he's ready, so he's, he's he's out there now trying to put together a uh, you know the first setup of of, of a shrimp farm uh, in uh, you know w w way back in, in the Midwest. <laughs> uh, the technology that that he learned um, with us, and you know the business. Now he's taking off with uh, coming up with a livelihood for the, the business plan that, that he had. So it's it, it really is very collaborative, very and good. I strongly promote collaboration. Uh, it saves so much resources. Yes. Definitely. Thank you. So, um, one other um, area, just as far as uh, research going on in the College of Aeronautics, mm -hmm. is we do a lot with airport safety and um, a few projects I've had an um, opportunity just to, to work in is looking at runway incursions, which are accidents or incidents that have occurred um, affiliated with um, airport runways, and looking at what we can do to really assess the top airport safety risks um, in the United States. And um, once we can um, start to get a handle of what those risks are, then of course we're more apt to be able then to focus on them and, and help come up with some improvements from a safety and human factor standpoint. Another um, research area is just in pilot decision making and what goes on um, in the cockpit when um, pilots are have abundance of information um, from different uh, data sources and just the decision making that goes on um, with that. So that's another area. And then a third area is looking at uh, social media. This one's not an aviation topic, um, but it's looking at <laughs> it's uh, social media and um, how individuals today, we're all so connected to our iPhones and um, or our smartphones and having access all the time. And then suddenly what happens when you get put in this restricted work environment and you suddenly don't have access and you have to maybe lock up your smartphone all day. And so there's actual, um, not only is there internet withdrawal, but there's even social media addiction scales out there certain, you know, that, that obsess people. So there's so much goes on, the withdrawals that people have when they, they can't even um, look on social media and, and other types of challenges, even if you're a caregiver um, for an elder adult. We've talked about aging. And so how does um, that tie in when you can't reach your phone and you can't have access, or you have a child that's a teenager and now they're home from school. And so, so there's just so much involved with that. So that's just another area too. Um, that we're looking at. Um, so um, just to switch the topic a little bit away from research, so what opportunities exist for students um, within your departments at the, say, the undergraduate level? Let's start with that. Okay. A few years ago, Debbie, we introduced a uh, two-semester class called Foundations in Creativity, Innovation, Entrepreneurship for freshmen yeah. students. And we knew they wouldn't know a lot about business or college and stuff, but we thought, you know, it's a way for them to sort of come in and, and show them that our program is different than you'd find other places. And we do some crazy things. But I remember uh, three years ago, we were moving to a new building, College of Business, and it didn't have any kind of food service. Yeah. So the students just kept complaining. You know, it's like they're only, you know, a quarter mile from places to get food, but they were starving never, nonetheless. And we see the challenge. We said, well, through this class, we're talking about innovation and creativity and going out and doing things. Why don't you come up with some kind of ideas? Yeah. You know, we'll go up and talk to people, figure out what we want. And um, small team formed. And the, the kids got very creative that uh, we have a trolley that goes from the main campus up to our building, which isn't very far. And they got the trolley driver to give out a survey to students that wrote it about what kind of things would you want. They went and talked to our food services on campus. They went and talked to the controller on campus, talked to all sorts of folks to get ideas about what to do. But all the way through this class, they came up with the idea, which 
the dean, and then ultimately the president approved. And now is the food service we have there. So, oh, wow. you know, it, it, it sort of challenges all the kids. You know, don't complain about stuff. Look at what you know. What is it that bothers you, and what can you do? Yeah. Yeah. You know, use some of the skills that we're learning in this particular class. So that would happen to work out there. But a lot of times we try to push it back to them. We always tell me we have no money. You know, so you got to figure out. There's all these constraints. Right. You go figure out how you make it happen within these different constraints. And and I think that's a unique thing. You know, maybe it goes back to the culture here. Maybe yeah. go back to the smaller class size. Mm -hmm. But you know, they, they can see the results of what they do. Yeah. It actually kind of pushing. You know, the other thing I remember you mentioned sustainability. But we had a couple of students in our classes that were big on that one. Mm -hmm. And and recently we opened up a uh, garden on campus mm -hmm. with all student run. That they cared about sustainability. They want to look at something that can make a statement on campus. They raised the funds, they put it together, and they have a, a lovely garden. I think they're going to plant trees or something next yeah, week or something. But that hands on theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and they're driven and, and, and they're using all the skills they're learning in our classrooms, but they're using it in things that really interest them. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Great. What about in your department? Um, for, for, for undergraduates, we, we have uh, continued our, um, our allowing our undergraduate students access to all of our research laboratories. And uh, a few years ago, we received this uh, grant from the National Science Foundation called Inquiry-Based Way or Technique of Teaching Undergraduates. And we're still doing that, and especially in you know, less attractive coursework uh, at, at their undergraduate, like statistics. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the way to do that is engage the student in the discussion of the topics rather than just lecturing to them. Because then they'll fall asleep, and with my voice, yeah. there's a natural tendency <laughs> to fall asleep. So uh, it's it's a it's a question-driven kind of an opportunity for them to discuss what their ideas are, um, and 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 so that has always been the norm at at uh, in, in our department. Uh, now uh, we have more laboratories now into the genomics of of, of everything that that we are, and um, you know th th there is this opportunity opportunity that is just emerging in an undergraduate called you know how to use. Um, information that had been generated in the databases. Uh, it's, it's called data mining and, and, and big data use. Uh, and we work with the math department because we really are incapable. As biologists, you know, <laughs> math is foreign language to us. But uh, it, it, the way to overcome that uh, need but weakness is to, again, collaborate. I'm very big with, with, with collaboration. We have so many talents at FIT, and, you know, I, I, and especially in, in marine biology, which I've ch shared, I've always, you know, look, okay, you know, what do you need? And I can have, give you that. But, you know, we have Dr. So-and-so, and, and again, it's the same thing with, with my student who needed a business kind of skill. I said, you know, we have a very good, one of the best school of business uh, in, in, in uh, in, in the state, um, and and Thank so you, that's right, yeah. And, and so our, our role now as, as as professors for for undergraduates and and in all levels now is to facilitate the you know the, the easy access of our students to all of these resources, which we all have at FIT. I think a lot of our our skills and resources are underutilized. Um, and, and we keep asking, you know, can you give me this, can you give me that? Not knowing that that perhaps sits in one corner of one of the labs somewhere. Um, and, uh, you know, th th and that I instill that upon our, our, our undergraduate students especially is, you know, just ask and open your mind and yourself to collaboration. Uh, no man is an island. Uh, you just, you know, talk to other people. And so um, our biology program has now grown uh, from, you know, the DNA to global ecosystems, uh, and we have skills. Um, any undergraduate who would uh, like to be engaged in those, you know, they, they, they have it. And what I tell my, my undergrads, this is really cool, is that you don't have to pay extra. Just show up. <laughs> <laughs> it's because some of the hesitations, in fact, is rooted so well, I can't afford to buy this, the, this compound that I have to analyze. I said, no, um, we have those. We provide. Our undergraduates have access to all of these opportunities at no added cost. Now, I went through big schools in which you know, they, may, they may be cheap at, 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 at superficially, but you, know, you have to, I, I tell them here, you, know, you have to sell cookies to be able to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to afford all of these extras. These are not extras at FIT. You know, these are here for you to utilize. Yeah. I was going to say that, yeah, there's a lot of great opportunities. That yeah. I just 
to work off what you said with collaboration, I know that a lot of the research that's done is collaborative. Um, working with different departments is kind of second nature um, at this point. We have you know so many great research opportunities for undergraduate students especially. Um, and in the psychology department particularly, we require our students to either have an internship opportunity or to do an honors thesis. And so they're getting ready for whatever their next step is, whether it be going into industry or um, going on to graduate school. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. For, for uh, other opportunities, as you said, that are free. You just have to show right. up. Yes, yeah. we bring a lot of cool guest speakers in, <laughs> our different things. And I tell the students, again, you know, you never know. If you as don't you go, there's an opportunity. Because we always hear a story of the students showed up for something, whether it's a job fair or a speaker, and they exchanged cards, they got yeah. an internship, or they got a job. I said, you know, if you didn't go, if you stayed in bed, it didn't work you out. Didn't you know, we can't out, guarantee yeah. it, but you got to go. And, and they hear people from different fields they may not have known anything about. I mean, there may be some speakers that are terrible and they don't want to go into those fields. That's good to learn when you're young. Yes. You know, but the more things you get experienced yeah. with and you go to, and I think you know, there's probably too many of them going on. You got you know, you got to That's prioritize right. your time. But right. there's there's something for everybody. Yeah. If you're and there's willing some to go try it. Too, and the pieces of gosh, advice I give so students is just just show up. Mm -hmm. You never yep. know what's going to happen if you just show yep. up. Exactly. Like you said, yep. stay in bed, you'll never know. <laughs> Sometimes it's good. <laughs> Sometimes it's good. But just by Anytime. showing up, you wouldn't believe the types of opportunities students get by just being there. Yeah. Yes. And I see the world differently, but you know, we talk about opportunities. A couple of years ago, I had a few students that, at best, yeah. were average students, and they were happy doing that, as long as they could go surf every day. And we have a beach this <laughs> close. They're not marine biologists, but they could go surf. But they then heard about that there was an intercollegiate surfing competition in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So, and on our campus, I think you need, I don't know, some number of students, seven, eight students, you can form a club. So they went and formed a surfing club, and once you have a club, you can apply to student government to get funded. Yes. So they got funded to go to the surfing competition. Right. You know, so they took advantage of the opportunity of the clubs, uh -huh. the things they learned, hopefully in the business classes, and then they went and had some fun. And darn, I think they finished second, so they qualified for the national, and they, they find ways to raise money. But you know, again, I think the things are at Florida Tech if students are willing to, to, to step outside, step outside. Yeah. to ask, to yeah. try. You know, I tell them, you, know, you can't fail. You're going to learn something by doing things, and that's what college is all about. And, and those things are bound here. Yeah. You know, I may be biased, and I probably am biased, but I, you know, I think it's almost unlimited if, if they want to try something. No one's really going to tell them no. No, that's, that's we'll find try, by the way, that could happen. The same thing um, with we have the Human Factors and Ergonomics Society in the College of Aeronautics, and this is open to everyone on campus. And we have students that will present their research, and when they're um, getting that publication, mm -hmm. um, they actually apply for student government, and student government pays for them to attend, um, which is amazing. Um, the other um, thing, just overall across the board, that we do have for undergrads, there are just a whole lot of different minors available. Mm -hmm. So you know, you can definitely you could get a degree in aviation, biology, psychology, or business, but then you could go get a minor in any one of these as well. So it really opens the doors, and sometimes we'll even have students get multiple minors as well. So um, we're going to go ahead and just talk a little bit about um, some um, programs that we have on our campus. All right, so in the psychology department, we have what we call concentrations in the undergraduate program. This is a really cool thing that we do because there are more areas in psychology than there are majors on this campus. And so we package different sets of courses for different concentrations in psychology. So whether you want to go into animal psychology or sports psychology or neuropsychology or social cultural, we have set courses for those. Um, a new major that we, or concentration we just uh, created was the psychology and technology concentration, which gets a little bit of the human factors, a little bit of the cognitive psychology, um, and looks at the research behind design, which is kind of cool. Um, for our graduate programs, we have a fast track and applied behavior analysis, which is the research with children with autism. Um, the, the, that program helps that line of research, as well as an industrial organizational psychology program, which focuses on uh, psychology in the workplace, and a clinical PsyD program, which is um, looking at uh, how uh, different therapies help individuals. It's the clinical aspects of that. So individuals in that program will be licensed psychologists to be able to do therapy with patients. Um, so a lot of different programs, a lot of different areas, and it just depends on what area interests you. We can help them find a good line of research to go on. Excellent. Thank you so much. Great. Uh, and uh, another thing, we, we talked about how international and how global the reach of FIT is. And so we had this innovation in, in, in our study abroad program in which uh, we, we took upon the philosophy of the traditional study abroad in which our students currently at FIT can register for a, um, a, a course that is offered somewhere else in the world and then they go there as an individual. 
Well, our study abroad is very different from that, and it actually adds security to, uh, to our class in that we actually, the whole class at FIT, the professors and all of the assistants and the students actually fly together to a location that would offer the best lab, the best at atmosphere for our students to learn. For example, we have a lot of those in learning different cultures. Um, they go to that location where you know, the, the, the culture really had evolved within. And in biology, we have uh, a number of summer field programs in which uh, we actually use, uh, for example, in, 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 in my Puerto Rico class, um, I just don't send the students to the University of Puerto Rico and learn from there because they have their own way of teaching their students. Well, we have our own FIT way. So what we do is we fly to Puerto Rico and stay over two weeks. Um, and we bring in the FIT philosophy, which is truly FIT, and utilize the, the, the local resources that uh, will enable us to actually learn more in depth about the situation in there. So that is truly, uh, I, I do believe that is a, an FIT um, innovation uh, that is available to our undergraduate students. And there's def different levels. Uh, you can pick and choose. And those are all um, considered uh, either as electives. We do have a lot of electives, technical or um, you know, liberal, liberal arts electives and all that in business and all that. So I, I thought that's unique to FIT. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Gosh, um, in the College of Aeronautics, we have a brand new AVD. It's a doctorate in aviation that's online, and it's strictly for individuals with a lot of uh, background in aviation. So um, very much individuals that are already professionals in aviation can apply for that. And we also have a couple other new programs, just some human factors and safety um, at the undergrad level. and. Um, just um, basically wanted to share a little bit on that. Um, also, Professor Muth and I wanted to cover some different resources that we have for students. Um, gosh, our library has tons of graduate student research courses where they teach students how to go through and do anything from literature reviews to uh, citing um, literature. We also have a digital scholarship lab connected with our library, and they do a lot with uh, students. They have all types of just amazing technologies they have these uh, really cool, just the room itself has all types of just funky looking furniture you can sit in and lounge in and interact in, and it really is great for just group. Uh, 3D problems. printers. 3D printers, excellent. Big, huge screen. Yeah, so you can touch a heart yeah, yeah. and feel what, what a heart feels like. <laughs> um, it's, it's amazing. Fun, yeah. yeah, a lot of fun. Um, then I'm just going to start talking a little bit on career resources, but Professor Mitt's going to talk more on it. But we do have, again, tons of different job fairs on our campus and um, lots of ways that you can meet with them for resume help. And they'll give you one-on-one -on -one guidance. And then uh, Professor Moore will talk to you a little bit now about the interviews. Yeah, well, I always talk to the students, and particularly the parents, prospective students, and tell them, you know, your goal is to get a job when you come out of here. <laughs> parents like to hear that. Yes, they do. Yeah. And the career management services job is to help you get that job. So we encourage the freshmen, you know, go as soon as you're on campus, like you said, start yeah. learning about your resume. Start going to some of the class and interview skills. And I don't know if we still offer, but they used to have a class in etiquette. Not kidding the kids about, you know, you came from wherever you don't think you know how to use a knife and fork. But, you know, what they do is they sit with business executives yes. and they learn how to make small talk, or as we call it business, networking. You know, and it starts at any age. You get somebody's business card. You know, that person knows you that when you send them an email or call them for an internship yep. or help with something, they remember you. Um, another place which I tell students, don't be shy about, it's called the Academic Support Center. That believe it or not, some of our students struggle. Maybe it's just in business, but they yeah, struggle so with well, subjects. Yeah. Sometimes it's math and statistics. Mostly. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Sometimes it's with the sciences that they have to take. But the Academic Support Center is kind of cool because included in the price, like you said before, mm -hmm. is one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Yep. And you know whatever it takes to get through that class. That go there, and in most cases, it's students tutoring you. Yep. So these are students that have taken the class before. Mm -hmm. And again, I kid with the, with the parents. I said, if you hear your child is going one hour a week, then they're going two hours a week, and they're going three hours a week. The reason they're going is not because they like tutoring. It's probably some um, attractive graduate student who's a tutor for them. You know, they have a crush on them. But whatever it takes to learn this stuff. But it's another just wonderful resource for students to use. We have a um, Harris Student Design Center. It's a beautiful building. It's got a big high roof, so you can bring airplanes and all sorts of stuff. Open to everybody. I take my creative innovation classes over there. We we make prototypes of stuff. Yeah. And we see like race cars sitting over here, and we see like a a, a Baja Surf. Uh, what's that? The um, the, the um, sand sand rover thing. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like a satellite over here, and drones over there. But just sort, all sorts of cool things go there. We have machine shops that they'll certify any student who wants to take a class. I had a business student that liked making surfboards. He got certified, he can now go use the machine shop. Yep. There's maker spaces where they can go use 3D printers and all sorts of stuff. You know, and it's open to anybody, which is what always surprises me. Usually they go to a safety class or some rudimentary stuff. 
but business students, psychology students, science students, engineering students, our aviation students can go to all these different places. And you know, last but not least, I like sports. We have a beautiful gym, a wonderful aquatic <laughs> center. Uh, yes. and we have a, a varsity training center. We have sports fields. I have a student that, that started last semester, and um, she loves archery. So she wanted to start an archery club. And she, and she recruited me as a faculty advisor. I said, I don't know anything about that. But I'll be the faculty. And then she started about having practice on campus. I said, I don't think we're going to do that. And although I know about those arrows, they probably have a sharp point. You know, we better go talk to somebody in, in the health and safety department. But they found a place, I think, at, at, at a local park here. Um, but you know, there's just tons of opportunities for students to, to, to do things on campus, to, to have fun, relax, and, and continue learning. There's a lot of events with telescopes. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so the uh, you know the, the space sciences and physics and space sciences program has one of the best telescope on top of their of the all-in physical sciences building, and um, you know it, it's not only uh, available to research students, but anybody who wants to take a look at distant uh, creature or or nature out there, they're more than welcome to just go to the physics and space sciences uh, you know program, and and and, and they're available too there. But but uh, but let me uh, you know add, add one right next to the sports complex is a true true reflect, reflection of our global nature here is the Panther Dining Hall, <laughs> in which you can go in there any day of the week and uh, you know sample cuisine around the world yeah. and it's a flat fee so you can pay of course we do advise you to get out of there after your lunch so you don't stay there the whole day <laughs> and uh, it's truly a reflection of how global FIT is from from anything that we do from sports to to the academics to research and to just everyday life they even have special nights for yeah. different um, countries mm -hmm. um, type um, different cultural type dishes and yeah amazing thank you for mentioning that and, that's and, one and of our favorites on campus what i really like to our international students that they experience is what thanksgiving means in the united states of america and 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 you know that before we break for thanksgiving is okay we all come from different car corners of the world but there is this truly american tradition and there it is, two sets of, 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 of a complete meal that uh, only a person who is in the USA would experience, and that's a Thanksgiving meal. I've never seen that. I've been to so many dining halls. They were all boring and, and kind of a recycled stuff. But I thought, that's not just food for the tummy. That's food for our understanding of why we are here at the, in the USA. Two of the cool things is we have a radio station on campus. Yeah. So our students have gotten involved with the radio station, the WFIT, uh, DJs or behind the scenes kind of stuff. Um, also, they have a telephone to raise money. We've had students go over there. We went to learn about rejection and talking to the public and stuff. You know? But you know, they man the phones and see how that goes for you. And we have a textile museum. Yeah, I'm not much of a textile, but I take my classes there once, once a year. And, and, just to go see the exhibits and, and reflect on what's going on. I mean, one time they made stuff all out of recycled things. I remember there was like a, a flight attendant's outfit and, and other stuff. It was really cool. Yeah. You know, learn a little bit about art. And they'll actually give you tours and put together little quizzes for the kid, like a scavenger, and find things while they're so there. Yes. And if you ever want to go on a flight, um, we can actually have pilots um, take you up on our flight line. Um, we have a lot of aircraft part of the College of Aeronautics too. So what other things? Anything else? Flight simulators too. Right? We do have flight simulators and driving simulators on right. campus and all types of things. <laughs> Great, so just some additional opportunities. We talked a lot about undergraduate and graduate, but just to also summarize our graduate research, um, basically opportunities are that you get to work in labs with multiple levels. So with undergrads working with master's students and with PhD students all together, which is pretty amazing because then there's also a lot of mentorship that also takes place at that. And also just, again, a lot of rapport with, um, you're gonna get to have with that um, professor and all the staff. We have a lot of just hands-on opportunities to work together. Um, so um, with that, we're gonna go ahead and move on to just what are our favorite aspects about our job. So um, I, I, I like to just say, I, I love the mentorship um, the most. Um, with students like I think it's really fun to get to work with students of all um, levels especially when you see that undergrad student their kind of light um, goes on and their face changes and you're like ah they got it and so I love that um, but graduate students too getting to work um, you know one-on-one -on -one with, with with them for research so great um, what two favorite aspects for me yeah. one is when I go to graduation yeah and I think um, about the student when they came at 18 and now they're mature yeah. and they're going out in the world and there's some I'm just happy they're gone <laughs> but, yeah, no, seriously right. but you see them grow and mature and the other is when couple of the graduates come back three four years later 
you know, they talk about what they're doing at work. Yes. And especially when they can relate, you know, something we did in your class or that class, yeah. this helped me there. You go, you know, in some small way, maybe we made a difference yeah. in that student's life and they're making a difference in somebody else's life. Excellent. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, very that cool. That is really cool. I don't have that experience yet. I don't have three or four years behind me to have students come back. <laughs> anyway, but, you old. Right, right. but some of my favorite parts about the job are working with the students and seeing them grow, change, um, you know, and, and the light bulbs going on and learning how to think and learning how to learn and becoming those lifelong learners. Um, it, it's really nice to see, you know, the classroom and the lab, the lines start to blur. You start seeing, um, you know, them just learning because they want to learn. They have a question. They have something they're curious about. There's something that keeps them up at night that they're that that, that they can't not think about. And so, helping them get through those problems by using the research strategies and helping them solve it, and doing something different every day. I mean, I think that is the best part about this job. Is you're always doing something new, and you never know what to expect when you walk through the door. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you Professor Ellis. In 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 my case. Um, the, 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 my most favorite part of, of, of my job here in my career is helping mold a career to our student, to, to every single student. So you know that, that's that's a driving factor in there. Um, you know, we as professors, we forget about ourselves because we want our students to be successful. And relating to what you just, you you you, uh, you just mentioned about you know receiving these emails that you know I would have not been here without you. To me, that is the best. Payoff, you know, the payoff for my job at FIT is it, it makes you feel fulfilled. Um, and it, you know, I'm a dad, and so uh, I, I do the same with, with with our two daughters. But it's very different when you actually are directly engaged in molding, you know, talking to our students. Okay, you are going to be taking these courses because it will help prepare you for this. And you give them these options. You know, I have this flowchart in, in, in on my desk when I talk to prospective students that you know, marine biology or biological sciences. Well, you know, it's not finished after you're done with us. You've got to go to the next step. And so, what we do as professors here is make you competitive for the next step. Um, and uh, you know, being able to nurture somebody else's career is truly an amazing. My, my goodness, it's you know I, I I could be very emotional with that one. It's it's mission that uh, I, I found I, I I found you know I like the most uh, you know with my job at FIT and you know the administration and all of our colleagues and peers allowing me to do that. Uh, you know what else can you ask for? You know. Great, thank you, Professor. <laughs> Again, thank you so much. You know another aspect yeah. if I could just of add on this is you know getting to know the students outside the academic realm. Yeah. 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 we have athletes here. We have people in the, the band, the chorus, and I'll, I'll forget something, you know, but you see the students around, you know, you see them playing a sport, you see them playing an instrument, you go to one of their recitals or something, and, and you know, it's kind of cool seeing those pieces come together, because sometimes you sort of get focused, you know, you know them in that classroom of this project, but, you know, they're individuals, like, we all have children, too, and, yeah. you know, there's, there's a lot of different aspects, of them, and, and they're all very unique and talented in, in different areas, and have interest in different areas, and, and just come to realize that. And the diversity of the students is great because they're teaching me things every yes. day. Yeah. Yes. You know, and that, that, every hour. For every hour, you know, I'm learning more things from them sometimes, I think, than I teach them. But that's it's because they're coming from all different walks yeah. of life. Yeah. They're coming from all over. Exactly. And it's really interesting to learn those aspects of different cultures. I love when a student graduates with their undergrad and now, now they're back as a master's and then they come back, say, for their PhD and it's a different person. It's so fascinating. <laughs> because of what they've done. It's amazing. So they get to see them grow so much. So, yeah. um, basically, in your opinion, just uh, what makes Florida Tech stand out from other universities? Mm -hmm. I, for one, our small classroom size. Yes, well, I, I'm, I'm going to use the, the uh, you know, I was asked that. I had three football players who were new recruits uh, who I talked to. They were interested in college science, and two of them showed up with their parents. And they're heavily recruited by other universities. And so one of the parents asked me, why would I send my son here? Mm -hmm. He could have the same scholarship from another university. Well, and so I said, well, I see, well, you just said that's another university. That's not FIT. So, so uh, you know, what, what can FIT then bring uh, to, you know, deliver to my son that other universities? Well, I know a lot of universities. And we just went through, you know, the details. And I did highlight those, you know, that we deal, we work with our students as an individual, not even a batch of 10. That's very different. We may have this generic flowchart for the program. But what it really boils down to at FIT is, you are an individual. You came here uh, based on your own motivations. 
your own dream as an individual. And we consider that in molding what you want to be after you come with us. And where else from other universities can you get that? It's only at FIT. I can guarantee you that. And the parents applaud it because they've never heard such a thing in, the, in all of the other universities that I went to. And you know, we can always teach effectively. But when you, you know, you, you, we, we root our performance from that, it becomes more of a personal um, kind of a relationship, which is awesome. Definitely. So many hands-on opportunities, like we talked about, publishing, again, research, really important. Yeah. And we really do help develop students. Mm -hmm. I, I talk to professors, students, and parents also. And, you know, it's a hard question to answer. It is. I don't know all yes. the other colleges. Right. And, and I tell them, you know, you guys sort of decide yourself where you feel comfortable, but I think Florida Tech is a very friendly campus. Right. Wherever you go, whether it's academic or staff, that if you have a question, someone's going to try to help. They're yes. going to help you, and even if they can't answer, they'll send you to some place. That's you know, and to the parents, I said, you know, I can't guarantee 100% experience your child is going to have, but I think that the right people are here. Yes. You know, if they're willing to ask and, and, and put some effort into it themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think people feel that when they're on campus and they walk around. And it's kind of, you know, it's intangible, it's hard to touch. Right. But I think when you're here, then, then you, you believe it and you feel it. And our right. students see it also. Excellent. Well, thank you um, so much. And, and thank you to each of you for listening today. We really appreciate your interest in Florida Institute of Technology. We're happy to um, talk with anyone. You can always um, reach out to any professor here on our campus. If you'd like to chat with us, then what we'd like you to do is go ahead and refresh your screen, and there'll be a chat box that will pop up um, for you. Thank you so much, and have a most wonderful day. And thank you to all the panel members. Thank you so much. Thank you for thank inviting you. us. Thank you. Thank you.